episode from 17 once again. This is my Metro Last Light Ranger Hardcore Difficulty video walkthrough. This is chapter 3 entitled Pavel or Pavel. This is the Russian dude you're going to be spending quite a lot of time with in this game for various reasons and this is another really dark level. So I am sorry folks that you may be having difficulty seeing a lot of this. Metro can be a dark game for, but for the most it's usually well lit. This is quite moody though, quite subterranean, so it does make sense. And the first thing we're going to be doing after the checkpoint hits there in the bottom left is we're going to be moving in the shadow of this fan so that we don't get spotted. Uh, for the most, this is an introduction to how the stealth works. It's all pretty simple, but as like anything in this game, if you get spotted, the game gets significantly more challenging because the guns do a lot of damage, and you don't take too much damage on this game. So my advice is literally crouch to avoid movement sound, abuse the light on your watch as best you can so that you know when you're visible when you're not, and just knock everybody out or kill them with your knife because it's so powerful and if you need to do anything at a distance, throw a throwing knife because they're equally as powerful. As far as the lights are concerned, you can go up to them and press X on them and turn them off if you want to unscrew the bulb. You do get an achievement for doing it, so it's something I would try and get in the habit of doing if you're that way inclined. You can also shoot them, which you know can make more sound, and the guards will notice when a bulb has been broken. Or you can throw a knife of them at, at them, sorry, which... The knife is hit and miss. Sometimes it smashes them, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not entirely sure how it's governed. All I know is that on my guide, or on, on the playthrough before the guide, sorry, I had no problem smashing lights with my knives and on the playthrough after this guide every single time I threw one it did nothing and it's not that I'm a bad shot it's just that the game's got such weird detection on it it, it just cock blocked me the light cock blocked my knife and it was very strange but this is so dark and what you're doing is you, you're waiting for Pavel to tell you what to do which is essentially move up behind the guard and knock him out or kill him and it's introducing you to turning lights off, to the stealth mechanics, to all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to use this opportunity to talk about some other things. But they are going to be Metro related, because I need to get them out there to front it, to try and clear up some information with this game. And I've got a Red Bull and Jägermeister next to me, so it's going to be fueling me in these hot temperatures. Because it's fucking hot, guys. Like, they do say that the English or the British or the UK people complain a lot about weather, which is very true because we live in such a, a bland country that there's nothing really else to talk about when you're at a bus stop with seven old ladies and it, it is a true stereotype but this is weather worth mentioning because we, we don't usually get it this hot and it can be really uncomfortable and especially in a room that generates heat anyway and especially in a person who generates heat higher than the average folk. So combine that all together and you have quite a sweaty situation. But the music at the beginning of this guide, I've already had a lot of people talking about it in only two videos. It is from the menu screen of this game. The rule of thumb with the music that I put on the walkthroughs is it will always be something associated with the game I'm walkthroughing. It's that simple. So if you're ever curious of what it is, the best thing to do is look at the game I'm playing and then search for the official soundtrack. You will find it if it has one. And then it'll save you asking a question, it'll save you waiting for a response, and you'll have your music and you'll be able to enjoy the fantastic guitar tunes of the, the Metro. Next thing a lot of people have been wondering about, this difficulty has to be purchased unless you pre-ordered the game or you're lucky enough to get the code when you buy it from a store. The developers of this game made the mistake of making the hardest difficulty a bartering chip for people to get sales, and it sucks, it does, it's inexcusable, it's stupid, I don't agree with it at all, but it's just the way it is. And I said before this game came out that I wasn't going to cover it on the grounds of I don't agree with what they did, and I still don't, I think it is unforgivable for a company to bribe people into buying the game so that they can play the hardest difficulty. Especially when you bear in mind that a very large percentage of people don't even finish the campaign on the normal difficulty, let alone challenge themselves to do so on anything higher. So, it's a strange gambit at the best of times, and it's a gambit that affects me more than most, because I am a harder difficulty kind of guy. That's just the way I swing. It's nothing sexual, it just is. And 
They denied me that choice, and I think it's bullshit. I really do. Now, one thing to learn on this game as well that's really empowering, when you're crouching and, you're, and your light is not blue, so when you are unknown to the enemies and crouching, you have so much power. You can walk up to them, you can walk past them, you can do everything except for perhaps physically touching them, and even then you can get pretty damn close to smell the aftershave. It's such an empowering stealth system that it can make the game a little bit too easy, but I would much rather have it the way it works in this one than it did in the previous one, because the previous stealth system was so hit and miss at times, it was horrific, and I really, really came to hate that aspect of the game. So this time round, so much more streamlined, so much more fun, just a better, better experience. But back to the difficulty, you might be wondering why are you doing this guide if you disagreed with it so vehemently, and that is a very good point and a valid point, because I'm usually quite, you know, I value my own integrity on YouTube to do the things I believe in. That's not going to stop me covering a project if I need to do it, because there's sometimes I have to transcend my own beliefs and just adhere to a professionalism that uh, I believe my channel can, can possess. So you're wondering, how, how, why would you do it, Chris? Why would you buy this difficulty? Why would you feed into this, this business scheme that, you know, if successful, could affect a lot of games? And the answer is, is in short, I didn't. I wasn't going to cover this game, but a subscriber by the name of Sofrek sent me a, a private message and asked me if I were to get a code would I cover it and my immediate answer to any kind of request like that is yes and you might be thinking why well it's it's quite simple to me if somebody's willing to pay money for me to do something or if somebody has the amount of confidence that they will use their own money to give me something or to, to provide something to me so that I can make a service I don't think the time it takes for me to do that is, is too unreasonable for me to come through for them. And that is generally how it works. So Sofrek showed an interest in what he would like to see. He asked me earnestly, expecting me to say no, and I, I agreed immediately without any you know, hesitation. If he gave me the code, I would make the guide. And to his credit, he said I di he didn't want me to make a guide because it, was, it would be too much of an investment, but I did it anyway because that's just how I roll, you know, you give me something, I give something back. And I'm glad I did, because I really enjoyed the game, and I really enjoyed the guide. It's just, I, I disagree with the business of it so much, and it definitely affects my, my verdict of the game, because there's no need to deny people content and put it behind a price barrier. And if you're a business person or if you're in the financial side of, of games development, you understand it completely because games are a business, you know. The the fun and the the gamer is second to the profit and the consumer. And it is sad, but it's you know, it's, it's capitalism once again. And I'm not going to go too deep into that stuff because there's no need because we all understand it. It's how we've lived for a very long time and it's just a, a necessarily evil. It just so happens that this game is worth playing, it's fun, and I had a good time playing it. I recorded this walkthrough in about five hours, it went really smooth, I only had two areas of issue, all because I was trying to do the zero human kills, as soon as I threw that shit out the window, it all went even smoother, and I'm looking forward to people watching it, because it's getting a good response on the channel, and it's, it's a good game that people are excited for. It's just a shame it's so late, and that's you know nothing but my own fault, so there's nobody to place the blame on there. Oh, if you come over here as well, you might may be able to get your weapons back that they took off you. I played earlier, and my weapons weren't on this wall, so I don't know if you've got to wait for a specific time for them to get the weapons out and put them up. I'm not too sure how that stuff works, but it is it can be missed, and you want to avoid it if you can. So, Another good thing about this game's stealth mechanic is if the enemies see you, there is a delay between them seeing you and them acknowledging that they've seen you and setting off any kind of alarm or any kind of notification that something shitty is happening. So you do have all the time in the world to respond in kind and silence them, which makes it really flexible and just a whole lot more fun. But that is the end of chapter 3. Another pretty quick mission. There's a couple more stealth missions coming up and then a couple more traditional you know, metro-style levels. So look forward to those folks, and as always, you take care now.